Okay. <sighs> the gun is clear. This is the, the fourth take. That's why I'm kind of acting this way. Shit's getting old because I keep messing up. Um, so there's nothing in the chamber. There's nothing in the mag well. There's no mag. There's no ammo anywhere near this table. There is some in the room, but uh, ammo doesn't just magically appear in, in a chamber. So I'm not going to clear my whole room of ammo because I'm cognizant enough to know, okay, well, uh, you know, I'm doing my part. But anyways, I want to talk about the Bull Armory SAS 2 Ultralight because I'm currently at 1,470 rounds. Uh, the gun hasn't malfunctioned since uh, October of 2023. That was during a training course that I took it to. The gun performed fine through that course. It did hiccup once. Um, it did. It had a misfeed. Um, what was I shooting? Blazer, um, brass, 124 grain, FMJ, uh, and I think. Shoot, I, a majority of the ammo I've shot through this is Blazer of that same type. Uh, and that's the only time it ever hicked up, hiccuped on, on Blazer. Uh, but of the four, uh, 1,470 rounds, it's filled eight times to feed. But five or six of those rounds uh, were one brand of ammo. It's Federal High Shock. Uh, so I had a bad experience with that now now keep in mind i was using that for range ammo i had like seven or eight boxes of that ammo that i bought during covid times uh locally and i didn't buy it to carry um in my opinion that 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 ammo isn't really marketed to be legit sd ammo it's practice ammo. Uh, even law enforcement uses it as practice ammo. Um, it doesn't have a lot of the properties that legit SD ammo has, such as being bonded. Uh, you know, that's just one one example. Um, but um, I never intended to carry that ammo. I just used it, and the gun didn't like it. So one thing that every gun owner that is using a gun with the idea of uh, you know using it for self-defense whether it's home defense or whether you're carrying it you know outside the house it doesn't matter you want your ammo to you don't want to you want to trust your ammo so one way to ensure that you can trust it is to shoot it and not just shoot a little bit of it bit of it shoot a lot of it yes it's expensive but i'm not gonna depend on ammo that's cheap as hell uh i'm you know i'm gonna buy ammo and i'm gonna buy a bunch of it so that i can kind of truly assess it so sw swap out some training ammo and use you know use that sd ammo during the training session but you're 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 you're, you're really doing it to kind of vet it uh so so i never intended to to, to carry that ammo but I had an issue with it and I'm saying this because there has been you know I said that online once I said that on reddit and someone laughed and said that's not cheap ammo that's that's good ammo I'm like I don't care how good it is if I can't depend on it it's shit why why would I why that why would I depend upon my you know and I vetted it you know it's not even like I just put it in the gun and walked, you know, walked downtown with it, um, just assuming that that it was going to work. I I used it on the range and it 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 failed six times. Uh, not only that, it failed more than six times. It just failed six times out of this gun. I had, I think I had two, maybe three other guns with me, and they were all 1911s. None of them. That they were all, you know, it was it was across the board. There was an issue, uh, 
So yeah, in, in my opinion, it, it, it's shit. It's good for training, for clearing feed, feed issues. But, uh, you know, my experience is that I, you know, I had issues with it. Uh, and I don't, I'm, I'm not ashamed to kind of say that, you know, you know, people kind of, it's weird, the gun community, you tell them your experience and then there's always some, some guy in the background that's kind of smirking or laughing or trying to mean shit. Uh, so, so, I mean, I share the, you know, my experiences and whether or not you agree with it, it, it really, does. but anyways, what was I talking about? Um, not had an issue with the gun other than two things. So I did have to return the gun. Um, I think I discussed it once, you know, I guess more than once. A couple of times I had a couple of videos where I kind of described the issue with the grip safety. It wasn't working. Uh, I was actually able to pull the trigger and, you know, when I pull the trigger, the hammer drop without, in, you know, depressing the, the safety. Uh, the grip safety so yeah um that was a problem for me um uh, now keep in mind that you know it has other safeties and remember this is my safety right so there are plenty of 1911s that are sold with no grip safety but um some of the wilson uh combat guns um some uh other 2011s uh and that right off the top of my head uh what the, the kimber sells a couple of them uh that don't have grip safety so is it important that that someone has a grip safety it depends you know it, it's that it's a subjective thing but uh you can have a gun without a grip safety uh so I could have kept carrying the gun because again, this is my safety and it comes with a thumb safety. Um, and as I carry my, my, my triggers covered, you know, it's protected by the holster. And, um, I, I would, I, you know, I could have been fine with it, but you know, when you buy a, a $1,600 gun, you want everything to work with, it, you know, so I didn't, I didn't want you know, to, to be carrying it and trying to keep in mind that, okay, the grip safety doesn't work, you know, so I sent it back. Um, but the problem wasn't, it wasn't the gun. It was me because one thing you might notice that's different between the last time I reviewed this gun and now is probably, you know, if you don't remember, I'll point it out. It's a grip tape. I've added grip tape because, uh, my grip discipline is not the best. Now, as I continue my journey with, with handguns, um, I am, you know, I've been doing this, what, maybe 10 years now. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing some things that are kind of promising. Um, for one, my, my grip discipline is leagues better. Uh, now, now I still have issues and partly it's not just me. The, the grip texturing on this gun, and I'm not the only one, you know, that has videos that 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 talks about this. Uh, they could have done better with the the aggressiveness of the the texturing, um, and I understand why. So the first version of this gun had excellent uh, uh, aggressive texturing, uh, but they must have gotten some negative feedback maybe it was tearing up people's clothes or their you know if you're carrying an appendix or or even strong side and the guns next to your skin it you know maybe you got like a some some rash from the over aggressiveness um but what they did was the second version this is the second version of the gun uh they made it less aggressive now the calm with that is is that some people who actually want it or need it, um, it's not there anymore. You know, that, 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 that texturing, that aggressive texturing, it feels somewhat slick in my hand. Uh, not as bad as some of my other guns, like my, uh, my, uh, PX4. Um, that's super slick. And I added grip tape to that, that one too. Um, 
but but you know what I did was what happened what caused that whole grip thing was this so initially when I taped up this gun it wasn't just like you know it wasn't up to here it was like up to here and what I did was initially I taped over the grip and with the idea of okay well you know I taped over it and I, I took a uh, an exacto knife and I cut around the grip to kind of free it up and, but when I did that I think some of the adhesive from the grip tape actually got jammed up in that in that in that in that gap and uh, it wasn't releasing properly uh, so I sent it to Bull Armory they didn't say what was wrong with it uh, but it worked when I got it back I still needed you know I guess some tape so what I did was I avoided the grip safety when I redid this and it's been fine ever since it's not it's not it's close to the 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 safety but not it's not under it uh, so so it works well um, it, um, actually I don't see myself going you know getting rid of the, the grip tape um, it works well uh, if I were to do anything with this gun it will probably be to buy another uh, more aggressive grip for it um, but I'm not I'm not to that point yet um, the grip tape is a good workaround I'll keep using that um, it, it, you know when it wears out or, or needs to be replaced I've got two big rolls that that will probably last me another five to seven years uh, so it works but when I was talking about my journey a couple of range visits ago so so I have a video where I, I talk about the fact that I bought a police trade-in uh, Glock 22 and I was all happy when I got it because I'd shot 40 before and I enjoyed it but with that gun I I, I hated that gun uh, because and, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out why why I had issues and I think it was because that Glock 22 is, is so much lighter than what you know what I was shooting when I first shot 40 uh, so I was shooting it through all metal gun and so I had a problem with, with control and recoil on that gun even with the sandpaper talon grips and uh, I put it in the back of the safe I was like you know what I, I hate the gun I'm not gonna get rid of it I don't get, get rid of guns and, but it, it just sat in the back of the safe up until a couple months ago so I had a box of 40 cal ammo and I was going through the safe looking at looking through the ammo and I saw it and I was like hmm I was like I only have 140 cal that's the Glock 22 so I whipped it out and then I was like well I'm going to the range in a couple of days so I'll just pack that up now I packed it up and I was shocked when I when I went to the range uh, I had no issues with controllability of that gun at all in fact I was astoundingly accurate with the gun um, and I had no issue with trigger pull I had no issue with uh, controlling recoil um, and it was flat shooting for me and uh, and I was like what the fuck I was like I couldn't understand that. I was like you know what the last time I shot this gun now now granted the last time I shot the gun was probably five or maybe longer than that six six seven years ago uh, so all of my time shooting these short light guns that have a decent amount of recoil now you know I always say that this doesn't have a lot of recoil for what it is it it doesn't have a lot but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have any um, it, it does um, which is why I want the extra I guess I, I guess I needed an, an edge with gripping the gun um, just to kind of tamp down, be able to tamp down on it better and this helps but um I think what has happened is be, is because I've been kind of shooting the more challenging guns um it, it it translates well when shooting the Glock 22 because I'm using those same principles 
and I'm not, I'm no longer having issues with that gun. Uh, to the point where I was like, whoa, shit, you know, it's like, I want, I wanted to get another polymer, maybe striker fire gun, a big gun for training. And I was looking at maybe either one of the big, uh, grand powers, you know, they have the Mark 23s. I was maybe getting a K100, uh, or a Q100, um, or maybe even a, a Glock 17, but shit, I, I was shooting that, I was shooting that 40 cal like it was nine mil. Um, and I was shooting like way out too. And I, that's another thing I noticed. It shoots flatter than nine mil. And so I was accurate from way the fuck out. I was shooting like 15, 20 yards. And normally I frown upon that because I can't even see where I'm shooting at. And now, now granted, I wasn't like stacking on a bullseye, but I was shooting a lot better at distance with that gun than this gun. And, you know, some people might laugh because it's like, well, you should because that's a big gun. But it's 40 cal, you know. So, yeah, I, you know, it made me feel kind of good. that I've been putting in the work and it, it, that's what I had to show for it. So um, I think I will start taking out the, the Glock 22 a little bit more. They kind of just use that as an a. I don't know, an assessment gun to kind of just validate, okay, well, if I can shoot this gun well, I can shoot any other, the, one of the handguns in my, in my arsenal well, with the exception of maybe my, my, my 10, my 10 mil. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, so that, that's been the journey with the, uh, with the Bull Armory thus far. Um, I don't see a need to, to switch it up. You know, I don't do a gun rotation. There's a reason for that. I want to be proficient with one gun. That gives me an edge. I do not get lost in the details of having a, you know, a, a rotation of five. I have to always remember, okay, well, this gun doesn't shoot the same way as the other gun. Um, if you train with one type of gun for a year, year and a half, two years, without fail, um, you're 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 going to be you're going to set yourself up for success uh, I know you know you know people there's some people who like to carry a certain gun on Sundays or a certain certain gun when they're carrying like when they're carrying in a suit you know or something like that um, I don't do that I carry one gun whether it's hot or cold you know I don't carry a bigger gun in the winter time um, I carry the same gun. I the, the five, you know, if I pick five 1911s out of my arsenal, every one of them has a, some different qualities. So they're even though they have the same manual of arms, they shoot differently. The triggers are different. They rack differently. Um, not all of them have the exact same texturing on, you know, on the grips. All of that, you know, I I don't need that type of chaos. What I just need is one gun to focus on, and so that's what I do. So um, there's really no need for me to kind of switch to a different gun. Um, I'll continue to carry this one for another year or so. At some point in time, I do want to try out some of my other nice 1911s for carry. So at some point, I might switch over to, like, for instance, the, the Alpha Fox Trident S15 because that carries better than this because it's thinner. Um, it also has better uh, grip texture. Um, I don't even have to worry about adding grip tape or anything like that. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have an optics cut. Uh, but I shoot that gun just as well as this one with the optic. Um, so, so I mean, uh, optics isn't an issue. It gives you an edge, but I can shoot well with irons as well. You know, it's not like, you know, I hear people complaining all the time about, about you know, why do you need an optic? You, you know, you have irons. Um, if the first time I started heavily using uh, an optic, I was like, oh shit. And then when I went to the training course, I took this gun and it had the optic. And at first I, you know, I asked the instructor, I was like, um, my gun has an optic. Do you want me to take it off? He was like, no. He was like, you know what? He's like, it, he said, he said, he said it like this. He said, optics, you know, are, are like cheat mode but 
you know, there's no such thing as cheating in self-defense. So, so yeah, I took that and it, it actually gave me an edge in the training. I was able to quickly acquire the dot. Um, as you train, you find yourself not really having to focus on the dot anymore. If you, if you do your draw correctly and you do it one way all the time, you're going to and just intuitively kind of have that have that dot lined up lined up already. Um, but the, the 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 thing about dots is, you know, and I'm preaching to the choir here. You know, some of you guys, you you already know this, but I'm speaking of this because there are probably some people that are on the fence, or uh, or some new folks um, who don't understand it. Or, that, you know, there, there's actually FUDs out there who don't believe in optics. And I'm telling you right now, um, optics are, they're a game changer. If you, I don't, I don't understand if you had, if you had the option for an optic, I don't understand why you wouldn't use an optic at this point. Um, so, so anything to give you an edge so that you can go home with, you know, to your wife and kids, use it instead of kind of struggling with irons and but but in the end it, it you know it doesn't matter all of this is about choice it's subjective um just because i i am advocating for an optic doesn't mean that you have to take that advice uh, you can continue to use your irons and with some people like like i said i can shoot my s15 that doesn't have an optic optic just as good as this gun the only thing that's different is is that the quick follow-on shots aren't quite as quick um, and and that's that's another benefit of the optic um, you can shoot really quick and you can be astoundingly accurate from distance uh, once you have that that dot zeroed in uh, so it so it does offer some distinct advantages uh, I, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of open-minded, you know, but if you're close-minded, you're not going to, you're not going to accept things like that. You're going to have, either have to experience, experience it yourself, or you're just going to stick with what you know, and, and that's fine too. Uh, but I'm probably going to keep carrying this gun.